Hey guys, Ryan Gill here with Hunt Primitive and I've had a lot of people lately ask me about the choppers that I use for bow making and if you've been following me for really any amount of time you know that all the bows that I build I really like to use hand tools. As far as all the working limbs I always work with a chopper and a draw knife and that is how I tiller uh, out every one of my custom bows that I make and that's probably one of the biggest things that we do here at Hunt Primitive is make custom bows. So I think one of the secrets to success in making a bow that will last a lifetime is using hand tools and following the grain. Not only do the hand tools slow you down a little bit, and you don't want them to be super slow, but they slow you down a little bit and especially using a draw knife to follow the grain. That's a big secret to the longevity of a good bow. Now, before we're ready to use dry knife, we need to rough the bow out. And so for that, I use a chopper, and I've used a lot of different choppers over the years, and I've finally latched on to a chopper that I really want to get behind. I really like it, and I've been working with Jason Smith at Hobo Forge, and together we have put together a chopper that I think is the absolute best bow making chopper that I've ever put my hands on and I'm going to tell you why pretty much right now. So I want you to really look at the chopper here. We've teamed up, like I said, Jason Smith at Hobo Forge and myself have teamed up to put together a chopper that I can really get behind and the reason is, is I wanted something that fit all the parameters of safety and functionality and when it came down to like this handle design is really important. You see how it swells bigger and this is really important because when you get to chopping on a piece of wood and especially when you're chopping down around your legs this swelled handle is going to gather your hand in. If you had a straight handle or something that didn't have a lot of taper it would be really easy for your hands to get sweaty and you accidentally throw the knife because it slides out of your hands or slips out of your hands on the down chop and ends up hitting you in the leg or in the foot and because I've worked with so many choppers and I've seen this come very very close to happening and then with me doing bow making classes in the past I've seen this happen a lot where choppers are just about ready to come out of people's hands and I have to let them know you need to dry the handle off. This is, you, I can hold this with two fingers and throw it as hard as I want and it will not come out of my hand. It gathers it and it is so comfortable so I don't have to get a death grab when I'm chopping. A nice loose grip while I'm chopping makes a world of difference. Now the blade shape within itself, it's very very well balanced. Of course it's got a little bit of front heavy as you would expect and it needs to have that for uh, the power in the chop. But it's also not incredibly thick. It's got great edge geometry on it for chopping. In fact when you get this thing you're going to be able to shave hair with it. I don't know if you all are going to be able to see that or not, I'll let that focus, but I can shave hair with this blade so you need to be very very careful with it. Now you don't need it to shave hair obviously to chop but that lets you know that it is a really good knife and you could literally cut and butcher meat with this thing, it is that nice and the edge geometry is really really nice on it as well. So anyway let's get to doing a little bit of work with this here chopper and if you are interested in one of these and support, supporting Hobo Forge you can check them out on my website huntprimitive.com and I will drop a link to that down in the description and I will also give a link to Jason Smith at Hobo Forge on Instagram if you would look if you would like to look at something like this that's custom so when you get one of these for me every one of them is just gonna have kind of the standard handle and standard Hobo Forge rustic looking blade on it um, it's gonna look pretty much just like this with your basic differences but if you want something custom you can certainly get that from Jason but I'll drop that link down in the description so anyway let's get on to busting out some wood and showing you how it works and then I'm going to show you a little bit of detail work on chopping the handle out on this bow that is almost finished that's usually a crowd favorite so that's going to be able to show you the detail quality of this piece as well so now I just want to give a little bit of show and functionality as to how good this chopper really works. Like I say, I much prefer this to using stuff like the power tools, like band saws, 
because they rip across grain indiscriminately. And you'll notice that once I dig the chopper in, I can let the tool split the wood out. And that's not terribly important when you still have a lot of mass like this, but especially when you are getting down closer to bow dimensions, it's incredibly important. I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to follow the grain of the wood. And that's why I absolutely, under no circumstances, do I use a bandsaw for roughing out any of my bows. And I think that that is the number one reason in well over 300 bows, 320, I think, eight or 329 to this particular date of making custom refined handmade bows. I've only ever had to warranty four bows in that entire time. As you can see, I'm never going to lose this out of my hand. It's so comfortable to work. Doesn't tire me out. Beautiful, beautiful working knife. All right, now I'm gonna bring you in a little bit closer here, and I'm gonna show you how I even rough out a handle. Now I will clean up the handle with a belt sander later, but to save on a lot of that wear and tear on belts and stuff, and also time, I have learned to chop out my handles much faster with a knife than I could ever do with a sander. And whenever I've done a bow making class in the past, this is usually kind of a crowd favorite that folks really like to see me work through and completely rough out a handle with nothing but a chopper. But it really gives you an idea on the the detail capabilities of this knife. Now I have cut this in with a hacksaw, just like I talk about using in my book. So you do have to be careful here because you can blow right down through the shelf of your bow. And this one does have a shelf. Not all of my bows do, but this one is one that does. And actually has a rawhide backing. This is going to be one of my high planes models, which I'm going to do a video on here pretty soon. bit of brace in here with my knee. Now well, flip the bow over. Come in from the other side. And that's how we can add some contour into the handle by chopping it into place. Just don't want to go too far. If it starts to undercut, you flip it over. Do it this way here so you can see what we're doing. And you can catch it up. You can see how we're actually able to add some contour into that. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And if you've ever used a, a wood rasp or a sander for something like this, you'd know how long it actually takes. And it does take a fair amount of time. Now I do do, I still do my finished sculpting, sculpting on the handle with a sander, but that's pretty much the, the grip and the tips are the only places that I'll use modern tools and that's just to get the 
the refined woodworking look in those areas, but since they don't bend, I don't have to worry about violating any grain in those areas. Almost done. Then for fun on this one, I'm going to show you putting in just a little bit of uh, of addition here as well. I'll brace that up with my knee a little bit. As this model of bow does have a little bit of contour in the grip. Alright, there you go. Our handle's roughed out. See how fast and easy that went? Now it's ready for the sander, so it saved us a little bit of time by chopping it out. So it worked out pretty darn good, didn't it? In fact, I might even clean it up. It looks like I could take just a tiny bit more out of right here, and uh, maybe a little bit more rounding it across the back. But for the most part, I think I showed you what I needed to show you. It turned out pretty darn good. So anyway, again, I don't give my seal of approval on a whole lot of stuff these days unless it has really won me over and these knives are exactly where it's at. Like I said, we've worked really hard. Basically a lot of back and forth work where I've said, Jason, I don't really like it about this. Go back and fix it and do this. And he has produced something that I am finally, this is exactly where I want it to be. The handle shape does exactly what I want it to be. It's just, it's rounded enough so it's comfortable, but it's got enough of square edges that it indexes really really well so you don't constantly have to worry about the, the knife shifting around in your hand kind of funny. So anyway thanks for following along and uh, you can find these down in the description below and uh, hey we'll catch you on the next adventure or tutorial.